Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. Please stand by for a voice check from WBZ Radio. Discovery ISS, this is WBZ Radio. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. I'd like to uh, begin with a question for Shuttle Commander Stephen Lindsay. It's now day four of your scheduled 12-day shuttle mission. You've brought with you this time not only a logistics module for doing more experiments on board the space station, but also a human-like robot, Robonaut 2. What is R2, and how will it be used? Uh, Robonaut 2 is a uh, is essentially it's in cooperation with NASA and General Motors, but it's a uh, it's a technology demonstrator. It's a it's a human-like uh, robot from at least from the waist up. And the intent by bringing it up here is uh, they're going to install it and they're going to uh, start pre uh, doing some basic tasks with it um, to see how it works in, in space and also to uh, look at it operationally and decide, you know, how would you best use a, uh, an and or a, a human-like robot in space? What sort of tasks to use it for? So it's a technology demonstrator uh, doing a little bit of science with it and, uh, and then a lot of operations with it to determine in the future is there a place for a human-like robot uh, in space to help us? And if so, then how would we use that? A follow-up uh, for Commander Lindsay. Uh, this is your fifth shuttle mission, the third aboard Discovery. As you lifted off last Thursday, what were your thoughts as Discovery began its final mission after 27 years of flying? Well, I, I think all of the crew has had a lot of thoughts about this being the last flight of the Discovery, as well as uh, the tremendous folks on the ground that have, that have been helped out, thousands and thousands of work, workers that have really worked on the vehicle since about 1984. Um, so we all think about that, but the truth is once uh, we get close to launch countdown, we're not really thinking about uh, Discovery's last flight. We're thinking about doing our job. So uh, honestly, from, uh, you know, from uh, prior to liftoff on through uh, liftoff and ascent, we're primarily focused on our jobs. Having said that, uh, it's a real privilege to be on this last flight of Discovery, and, and uh, I have flown, flown her three times now, and, and she's just a great vehicle still. Well, here in Boston, we're quite interested in our two local astronauts, Mission Specialist Stephen Bowen of Cohasset and Flight Engineer Katie Coleman of Shelburne Falls. First, Katie, I saw in one inter interview that you did that you play the flute in space, uh, continuing to keep up hobbies from home. Describe the camaraderie, if you will, aboard the space station, especially when you have uh, new guests. It must be a red-letter day when a new shuttle crew arrives. Well, there are six of us aboard here uh, before STS-133 showed up, uh, two Americans, one Italian, three Russians. And, you know, we're all different kinds of people, but we have a common goal, and that is to live and work in space and, and see what, uh, you know, see what great things that uh, we, can, we can do from here. Um, it, to me, it's just a, it's a marvelous place to live and work. And when these folks showed up, I'll tell you, I didn't realize maybe that I'd been a little lonely until you got here. And it's just so nice to see other people and, and uh, talk about different things. And it also just brings some new perspective and new excitement. You know, even on a place as marvelous as the space station, sometimes you wake up going, OK, it's another day in space. And uh, I think new folks bring a perspective that we're, we're really pretty lucky to be up here in such a special place. Well, this question is for mission specialist Stephen Bowen, you have two spacewalks scheduled. Outline what you are, are your objectives are during both. Well, tomorrow we'll have our first spacewalk, and our, our objective tomorrow is really to set up so they can install the uh, PMM the following day. After that, we're going to reposition the pump module, which failed this summer. We're going to put it back uh, to its carrier, basically, where it will be uh, taken down on a later flight. And then after that, we'll be moving on to uh, a lot of cleanup tasks if we have the time. Uh, those are the two primary objectives for tomorrow. The next EVA, uh, we're kind of all over station. Al's on uh, one side, I'm on the other. Uh, we have a carrier that's coming off to Columbus. It's going back to the payload bay. Al's got a lot of work to do on the back side of the truss, trying to repair some radiator beams that hadn't, didn't quite fit the last time somebody tried to fix them. So Al's got that on his plate. Uh, so, really, it's a lot of tasks all over the station. You were assigned this, to this mission after a fellow astronaut, uh, Tim Coper, was scratched following a bicycle accident in mid-January. Did the relatively short notice uh, make it more difficult to prepare? Prepare. Well, yeah. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of things I don't know uh, that I'm trying to catch up that are specific to this mission. Uh, but these guys have been training together for so long, and they know this mission so well. Uh, they've been able to, to pick up the slack that I kind of brought on board, and uh, they've got me covered pretty well. Stephen, do you look for home, Boston, as you circle the Earth? 
I haven't had a chance to yet uh, from on this mission, but the last mission, uh, absolutely spent some time looking down. Got some great pictures coming up the coast uh, that I managed to share on a couple of vi visits back home. Uh, on the previous mission, I was actually out EVA, and uh, Eric was on the flight deck and called out, said we're about to go up over Boston, but the sun's setting. So I couldn't see the ground, but it was one of those events where they could see the space station passing overhead as I was outside. So I uh, waved down to my sister, who I know was outside, waving back up. My last question is for Shuttle Commander Stephen Lindsay. Discovery is going to be housed at the Smithsonian. You have such extensive knowledge of the shuttle. If you were going to play tour guide, what would you most want to show visitors? That's a good question. Um, I guess I guess what I would really want is I would want visitors to get a perspective of the shuttle like we have. Um, the uh, to me, it's uh, if you're going to display one of these, ideally what I like is I like an opportunity for people to be able to not only get up close and personal, look around the outside of the vehicle, but but maybe take a walk through the payload bay and see what's out in the payload bay where all the cargo that we carry, because there's. There's not a vehicle uh, that's ever been able to lift as much as we can uh, into low Earth orbit, and I don't think there will be for quite some time in the future. Um, but I also like them to be able to get on board in the mid deck and the flight deck and experience what it's like to uh, to fly the vehicle, as well as what it's like to uh, to live in the vehicle, because we not only obviously fly it and take it up into space, but we live in it uh, for days on end. Um, so. I guess what I'd really like is the, for the way to be displayed, display in such a way, and I'm not sure how to do this, but such that everybody can walk through and, and get a sense of what it was like to fly and what it's like to, uh, to, to live in this uh, spacecraft in space. Well, thank you all for your time. We wish you a successful mission aboard Discovery's final flight. Thank you very much. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WBZ radio portion of the event.